EP1100, Data Communication and Computer Networks. Some illustrations in this material are collected from the book by Forreston, Data Communications and Networking, published by McGraw-Hill. In this next part, we're going to talk about transmission and data communication. The overview is the following. First, I go through the basics of data communication. Then we look at transmission media, both guided and unguided media. Then we look at the transmission capacity that you get from a transmission medium, the attenuation that makes the signal weaker as it propagates, the distortion that the signal is subjected to, and the limitations ultimately that are placed on the data rate. Then we look at actual ways of um, transmitting data over a medium by modulation and line coding. We look at the framing of data and synchronization, and multiplexing of multiple data streams, and give some examples of uh, time division multiplexing and asynchronous digital subscriber loops. The basics of data communication relies on com uh, propagation of electromagnetic signals. We take the signals and we form them into well-defined waveforms. The example below shows a sinusoidal wave that has two amplitudes, a lower amplitude and a higher amplitude. We can re let these two amplitudes represent the bit value. So in this case, as you see, a low amplitude is a zero and a high amplitude represents bit value one. Then we send the data by modulating the waveform by the selected data. It doesn't have to be a sinusoidal. We could have a direct current that we chop by uh, switching it on and off. And here, no signal means zero and signal means one. This signal propagates through a medium or through vacuum even. The receiver detects the waveform and maps the waveform back to data bits. It will also have to handle errors that might occur in the transmission. Transmission media. This simple schematic shows a transmission medium going from a transmitter to receiver. It illustrates a waveguide so that the electromagnetic wave is contained into one guide that leads it forward towards the receiver. Here we also illustrate that there could be intermediary equipment in the medium for amplifying the signal or generating the signal. To guided media are for transmission of electrical and electromagnetic signals. We look at twisted pair cable and coaxial cable, and also for optical single, where we look at the single mode and multimode fiber. Then we have unguided media, so free space communication, where there are electromagnetic waves that are carried in the air or in vacuum, such as radio waves, microwaves, and infrared waves. I'm now going to show you some guided media. Often when we talk about waveguides, we call them wires or cables. So here we have twisted pair cables, coaxial cables, and optical fibers. A twisted pair cable is a very simple cable. It has two conductors that are insulated, and the cables are twisted together to minimize the external disturbances that can be generated in, in the cable and disturb the signals that's being transmitted. Twisted pair cables often have several pairs bundled together. Often we have a connector such as the 8P, 8C connector, often referred to as RG45, and it's often installed in buildings. It's a cable that's cheap and simple to install and to put contacts on. There are shielded versions and unshielded versions. The unshielded version is most common and it's called UTP. The shielding protects from external noise and crosstalk, but it's bulkier and more expensive. Here's a table of different categories of unshielded twisted pair cables. The most common today is the 5E and the 6 categories, which are used for local area networks and can support bit rates up to a gigabit per second. Coaxial cable has a different construction. It has an inner conductor, an insulator, an outer conductor, an insulator, and then a plastic cover. And it has a higher bandwidth than twisted pair cable. Optical fiber for light signals consists of a core of silica glass or plastic. And then it has a cladding with lower index of refraction so that it mirrors the light signal in the core. This reflection depends on the angle of incidence in, into the fiber. When the sender sends light in, the core acts like a cylindrical mirror. So the signal can propagate by reflections on the interface between the core and the cladding. The light sources are light emitting diodes or laser diodes. Here I illustrate two forms of fiber, the single mode fiber and the multimode fiber. We can take the multimode fiber first. The core is so broad 
that the different angles of the light that comes in that get reflected. And as I try to illustrate here with the arrows, you can see that different angles result in different paths of propagation through the fiber. The light path that bounces the most goes the longest distance through the fiber. If you send in a pulse to multimode fiber, it will propagate along all the different paths. Once it is received on the other side, all the different versions of the pulse will be superimposed and the pulse will not be as sharp any longer since the distances that the pulse copies have traveled are differently long. In a single mode fiber, the core is so small that there's only a single angle that will lead to reflection and propagate through the fiber. The quality of fiber is very high for transmission. We measure the loss in decibels per kilometer of fiber and typical values are 0 0.3 decibels per kilometer. There are both advantages and disadvantages with optical fiber. The advantage is that it has very high bandwidth, has low attenuation as mentioned, there's no crosstalk so because photons don't interfere with one another, they're not sensitive to electromagnetic noise, and the cable has a low weight per meter. Disadvantages relate to the installation. To pull the cable is, is not so simple. It's difficult to bend it sharply because if you bend it too sharply, the light will not mir get mirrored inside the, the fiber and you will have a high loss of the signal. Connecting cable segments together requires wielding and adding connectors is, is a complicated mechanical procedure, especially for single mode fiber. Maintenance and repair is also more costly than for a twisted pair or a coaxial cable. Signals can also propagate in free space. Here I show different ways of propagation. If you take low frequency radio signals, they actually follow the surface of the, of the Earth. So you can reach long distances beyond the horizon. In, in sky propagation, you can bounce radio beams off the ionosphere and then at higher frequencies, above 30 megahertz, you have to have a direct path for the signals to propagate between the sender and the receiver. We talk about radio waves that are used for a television broadcast. These are signals with frequencies up to a gigahertz, pass through most obstacles like walls and vegetation. The transmission is terrestrial or uses satellite, often with omnidirectional antennas to reach wide areas, and often sent from high towers for line of sight propagation to the receivers. When you go up in frequency, you come to a range that's called microwaves, it's often considered being from about 1 gigahertz up to 300 gigahertz. Now the signal is attenuated more by obstacles and water and other reasons. So the signals start behaving more like light signals. This range is used for cellular phones, for Wi-Fi, and for satellite networks. It requires a li line of sight propagation. You can use unidirectional antennas to create point-to-point -point microwave links or omnidirectional antennas for mobile and broadcast communication. Infrared light signals have frequencies from 300 gigahertz to 400 terahertz. So they belong to the non-visible part of the light spectrum. It's basically heat radiation. Here again, we have line of sight propagation but reflections can be used to bypass obstacles. There's interference to this from um, sun rays, since it's heat radiation, and this communication often used for short distances, for instance, for remote controls. Here is an illustration of the bandwidth for different media. So you see the twisted pair going up to about 100 megahertz, coaxial cable going up to gigahertz, you see the position of the broadcast services like AM, FM radio, and television. The microwave range, which is used for radio, microwave ovens, and, and uh, microwave communication. And then the infrared and, and eventually visible light, where the optical fiber is used.